So it's interesting to consider the limits of the properties and production conditions associated with carbide-free bainitic steels. This is a typical microstructure of carbide-free bainitic steels where we have these fine platelets of bainitic ferrite separated by carbon enriched films of retained austenite and as a composite this structure is very strong because of its scale and it is also tough because of the absence of the carbides and the presence of the retained austenite. These are experimental data on the transformation temperature versus the transformation time and the dashed lines represent our mathematical models of this behavior. So what this shows is that as the transformation temperature decreases, the transformation time increases quite dramatically. If I wanted to design a steel which can transform in approximately 10 minutes, then I would need a transformation temperature of the order of 400 degrees centigrade. On the other hand, this is not possible. I cannot achieve a fast transformation if the transformation temperature is of the order of 150 degrees centigrade. So this domain is excluded for the production of bainitic steels. Similarly, uh, if I want to make a very large component then I need to have a slow transformation rate but that cannot be achieved if the temperature is high. So this part of the domain is also excluded in the design of bainitic steels. Now the reason for this behavior, and here is that graph again, is that we are looking at the lower part of the C curve for the bainite reaction where the transformation time increases as the transformation temperature decreases. And this part of the C curve is not normally accessed because you want to avoid the reactions that happen at high temperatures. If we continue to add alloying elements to the steel, then in fact the C curve for the bainite reaction changes with no upper part here. In other words, the transformation time will increase monotonically as the transformation temperature decreases. So the behavior that I illustrated is a direct consequence of the nature of transformation kinetics. Uh, the same data and a different model now representing the ultimate tensile strength that can be achieved as a function of the transformation time. Uh, so here we can see that the strength increases as the transformation time uh, required to achieve completion of the reaction increases. And there is a simple reason for this, that as the transformation time increases, the transformation temperature is decreasing and therefore the structure is becoming finer and therefore we get a much higher strength. I'll come back to this, uh, this region later, uh, but if you look at this, it's immediately obvious that if I want to achieve strength in this range and in a time period which is short, then this design curve shows that it's possible to do. Here we have a plot of ultimate tensile strength versus transformation temperature, basically to illustrate the fact that the structure gets finer when the transformation temperature is reduced and therefore it, uh, the material get, becomes stronger. Now elongation is badly behaved as you can see from here. Uh, there's not much of a correlation of elongation versus transformation time or transformation temperature. Now the reason for this is illustrated here. Supposing I have three different carbide free bainitic steels with different initial retained austenite contents. As I deform them, the retained austenite will decrease according to these curves here. And then fracture occurs at these red points 
which represents approximately 10% of retained austenite. So the conclusion from here is that when the retained austenite content reaches about 10%, fracture happens. Now, why is this? Well, supposing that the blue here is retained austenite and the white is the bainitic ferrite, uh, when the retained austenite content is sufficiently high, it percolates completely through the mixture of ferrite and austenite. Okay, so we are basically stressing the bainitic ferrite and the retained austenite. Now, as the retained austenite uh, undergoes transformation due to stress, its volume fraction decreases and we no longer have the austenite percolating through the structure. I cannot draw a continuous line through the red regions. And that means that the bits of austenite that transformed into martensite are now being loaded. And that martensite is rich in carbon and it's untempered and is therefore brittle in strong steels that will initiate fracture. So the conclusion is that when the retained austenite content reaches about 10%, fracture will occur. So supposing now that we needed to design a steel with a strength of about uh, 1600 megapascals, elongation of 15%, transformation time of 7 minutes, and a transformation temperature of the order of 3 to 400 degrees centigrade. Is this possible? Well, uh, First of all, why do we need only seven minutes of transformation time? Well, this is a continuous annealing production line where the steel is passing through the system at a high rate. After going through this line, it goes into a galvanizing bath and then is coiled and the transformation happens inside the coil at temperatures of the order of 350 degrees centigrade. The galvanizing bath itself is at about 450 degrees centigrade. So, we have limited amount of time to achieve the transformation before the coil actually, uh, the strip or the coil cools down. So going back to this graph, this is the region that we want to work in. And basically it looks like it's possible to design. So all we have to do is calculate the appropriate uh, time temperature transformation diagram, etc. Choose the right transformation temperature, which is of the order of uh, of 400 or 350 degrees centigrade. Uh, we need to think about elongation and we use uh, the philosophy we developed earlier that we need to start with sufficient retained austenite and assume that fracture then happens when we have 10% left in the mixture of phases and that gives us our elongation of about 15% and lo and behold that's exactly what we get. We have a strength of the order of 1500 megapascals and an elongation of the order of 15%. So the domains that we have identified where transformation and production conditions are appropriate can result in a very rap rapid design of a steel. It's when we have to deviate from those domains that it becomes impossible to obtain fully bainitic steels. Now, I've focused on carbide-free bainitic steels, but recently there was a paper published on a forging steel. Notice the low silicon concentration. So the microstructure here it does not contain much retained austenite. This is the bainitic ferrite. This is the small amount of martensite and a small amount of retained austenite. But notice that the data fall on the same sort of a curve that we had for the carbide-free bainitic steels. So it's possible that the similar conclusions apart from elongation apply to normal bainitic steels which are not carbide-free. And indeed, uh, if you plot the tensile strength that was achieved and the transformation time that was used to achieve the structure, then it's not far off from a design curve. So basically, when attempting to design a new trip-assisted steel or a steel uh, which consists only of bainitic ferrite and retained austenite, Curves of this kind can help you define the transformation conditions and the properties that might be achieved 
so that you can implement your design very rapidly. There are more details on this website. Thank you.